Well, welcome everyone. Thank you uh, for attending today and thank you for joining us with uh, today's presentation uh, about PAW administration. Specifically, we'll be talking about system administration using the new IBM planning analytics experience. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in just a moment. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started, um, questions that, that are often asked. Will you be able to get a copy of the slides after the event? Absolutely yes. And is today's event being recorded? And the answer to that is also absolutely yes. Um, we keep a, a recording of all the, the recent webinars and as part of the, as part of Revelwood's approach that we've been doing at the beginning of 2020 is we've conducted various webinars over all the aspects of the, what we're calling the, the new experience. So please uh, don't hesitate to visit Revelwood's website or the YouTube channel to view our previous webinars and um, and the webinars for the future. So my name is Lee Lazaro. I am the planning analytics practice leader at Revelwood. My role is to oversee all aspects of planning analytics implementations. Everything from the initial discussions of what we're looking to do, talking about some of the business process, the finance process, how we design the system rolling into the implementation and the training and the follow-up support. And I am joined today by um, my cohort, Dylan Rossman, who is a consultant at Revelwood who is involved in various aspects of, um, of implementations. What we're gonna be talking about today is we're gonna start with a, a brief overview of who are we? Why are you here and why are you listening to us? A, a little bit about uh, Revelwood and our background. We'll talk a, a little bit more about what I had referenced before regarding what we call the PAW new experience. And then I'm gonna turn things over to Dylan and he's going to give us a, a, a detailed demonstration of what administration in the PAW experience is. And then we'll kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about other things that we wanna consider. One of the goals of what we try to do in these presentations is to make part of it a full technical demonstration where you get to see the tool, you get to see a live interaction and actual implementation and usage of it. But then we also like to think about how do we use it? Why do we use it? What kinds of other things should we consider? So we wanna make sure we talk about that and then we'll talk about a few next steps. So who are we? Revelwood is an award-winning IBM analytics business partner, and we have been doing this for a long time. As you can see from this slide, we have been doing this for over 25 years. We have hundreds of implementations worldwide, everything from old school TM1, current planning analytics, the new iterations of planning analytics with Watson. And the reason that we have been doing this uh, for so long worldwide is our, our team. Our team is all certified, our team is all experienced, but more importantly, our team it consists of a combination of technical and business. Our goal, Revelwood's approach, is to bring the business and technology together, to not just build a system, not just create a, I guess we call it a computer program, but to also think about how. How do we want to budget? Why do we want to budget? What kinds of user experience components come into play? And that's where Revelwood brings it all together. Our motto is we speak business first, and as a result of that, we can, you can see that IBM has presented us with a series of awards, one of which is up at the top right corner of the slide, and we are also a member of a series of councils associated with various things within IBM and outside of IBM. So we've been doing this for a long, long time, and part of our goal today is to introduce, um, in introduce you to, like I said before, the technical aspect of the tool and also one of the things that we want to think about when you're just implementing, and I purposely use that word just implementing, because you're never just implementing. So let's start by talking about what is this acronym that we've heard. At, at this stage, I, I believe many of you have heard of PAW, and in, in essence what it is, is PAW stands for Planning Analytics Workspace. It's the web-based interface that's used for IBM Planning Analytics. And really what that is, is when we say an interface, it's an interface to your data. This is how you do, you're going to be doing all aspects of planning analytics going forward. The plan, how we do our inputs, putting numbers in, the reporting, how we're pulling numbers out, the development, the administration. And for those of you who've seen some of the uh, previous webinars that we've done, what I often like to do is to reference legacy versus, versus the new approach. 
really what it is is it's it, it's a full 180 in regards to the the model and the concept back in the cm1 world what we call the legacy system most of what you did was through the excel environment you were you did your inputs you did your reporting but you also did your development and your administration and the web approach was designed mostly for your end user when you flip that to full 180 in the planning analytics environment and the pa environment most of the work is done on the web. Your input, your reporting, your development, your administration. Still an Excel tool, there's still a powerful Excel tool, but the Excel tool is now used as the end user experience. By doing this, by making these changes, IBM has also changed their approach. IBM is regularly releasing new versions. You can see that by looking at this in regards to the PAW, the web component, PAX, the Excel component, there are versions that are released almost every month and even recently you could see that just yesterday there was a paw release new features enhancements bug fixes all of those pieces okay and the great thing about it is that they're released uh, like i said almost on a monthly basis but one of the big ones that came out was in late 2020 was a new version 57 or 58 depending on if you're local and cloud and as part of that new version there were a series of new pieces, a lot of new functionality. IBM has been branding this and then the user community has been branding this as what we call the new experience. And the new experience has a lot of pieces. But the first thing that comes into play with the new experience is the overall interface has changed. So when you first log in to the PAW environment, the, the thing that'll jump out at you in the um, PAW world is the updated homepage layout. It's more consistent with other IBM products. For those of you who've used other IBM tools, you'll see the consistency in regards to how the sheet is laid out, how the widgets are created, the color scheme, the, the concept of the top and the left. You can see up on the top of the screen, it, it's where we've got a description, and you've got some navigation. Over on the left is where you have some um, menu options and things that'll pop out. Another piece that came into play as part of this new experience is a lot of enhancements and a lot of improvements on the reporting side. For those of you who've played around with Cognos Analytics, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. IBM has, saying, has been saying for a long time that the eventual roadmap of planning analytics is to merge what used to be called TM1, what used to be called Cognos BI, and this is probably the biggest jump in terms of that because you're gonna see that a lot of the widgets get shared. A lot more customization in regards to fonts and colors and labels and where you're looking at your tabs and pieces like that and there's also a series of new visualizations in addition to the standards bars and you know pie charts and things like that there are new bullet reports multi-line columns and something that's been asked for for a long time waterfall charts you can see down in the bottom right corner that there's a lot of different visualizations that are now in there and there's a lot of different ways to customize and build those the main reason everybody's here today is another piece of the new experience is the administration. And the administration approach has been reorganized. And, and really what it comes down to is how can we simplify the approach? Instead of creating a whole series of independent pieces, it's now brought together on a summary page where you're able to do all your administration in one piece. And there's gonna be some additional configuration settings and some additional migration approaches and pieces like that. Dylan is going to do a deep dive into that, and that's that's where he's going to talk more about it. But from a high level, the ultimate goal is to try to simplify the administration. In addition, there were also some new functionality aspects that were built in. One of the new pieces of functionality is forecasting. Forecasting is IBM's uh, term that they're using for predictive modeling. And this is where we're able to model trends and seasonality. You're able to look at lines and bars you'll be able to see the confidence bounds like you can see over to the right of that image and you'll be able to utilize a series of algorithms to do various uh, various aspects of forecasting i had mentioned before that we record all of our webinars and last month's webinar was all about forecasting so if you have any interest or if you'd like to learn a little bit more about forecasting please absolutely visit our site and you'll be able to see a, a demo of the forecasting approach and another new piece of functionality is what we call applications and plans. Applications and plans are a way in the PAW environment that you're able to group pieces together, which segues into the uh, concept of workflow. So IBM's definition of, uh, IBM's wording of a plan is really the definition of a workflow. 
this is where we're able to do submissions. This is where we're able to create some extra security, due dates, orders, things like that. And that actually be, is what we're going to be talking about next month in regards to next month's webinar. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. But the, and, and then the final piece that comes into play, which is a really powerful piece, is the fact that there's a lot of new stuff. There are a lot of new features. There's a lot of new um, interfaces. There's a lot of new functionality. Part of that new experience is the ability to preview it. It gives you the opportunity to determine, do I want to roll this out to my users? It gives you the ability to look at it, play with it, see if you like it before you send it out to everybody. Think of it almost like a demo environment where you're able to, to play around with it. Okay. So from a high level perspective, you can see that there's a lot of new components, or there's a lot of components associated with the new experience. But I know that everybody's here today to focus specifically and, and listen specifically in regards to the system administration component. So I'm now gonna turn things over to Dylan and he's going to do a demonstration of the system administration function. So I'll stop my sharing. And Dylan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Lee. All right. Okay, so uh, today we're going to discuss the different components of Paul administration. Um, and as Lee had mentioned, the first thing you're going to see is this new summary page. And as I go through through this, I'm going to try to cater to two sets of people, people that have seen Paul previous to this update and people that haven't seen Paul at all. Um, so in the old world, prior to this update, if we go ahead and look at the old Paul administration page, you see it's more of a tabbed approach. We have to click through all the different subsections to get information on each one of those. Compared to the new world, we have this new tiled approach where we can see everything all in one spot and you can see insights into each one of them. So for databases, I can see I have nine total databases, three of them are stopped, five are healthy. I can see I have two total agents, one of them has a concern, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, I can see I have three total users, what that breakdown is between each role, I have one consumer, one modeler, one administrator, uh, two groups. And then these bottom three, you see we have a bit of a description on what each of them are. Um, and one other small thing that I find very helpful compared to the old world is this introduction of this information button. And what this will do is no matter what page you're in within administration in PAW, if you click on this button, what it's going to do is it's going to take you to the IBM documentation specific to that page. So you saw I was on the main administration page. I clicked that button and I can see the main administration page documentation where I can get information on, on users and groups, uh, databases, all things I just talked about. Um, so that's a high level overview of you know, the, the new administration layout. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and move into each individual, in each individual component. Um, of administration. So if we dive into databases, I click in here and you see it, it follows a very similar um, layout as the home page where everything is kind of laid out on one page, uh, which was not the case in the prior Paul experience. So I, I can see a list of all my databases. Um, I can see their names. I can see a little icon with their health. Um, I can see the agent associated with that database. And if I click through each one of these databases, you'll see on the right here, I have a few different tabs of options. I have details, so I can see this database started. Um, I have the ability to stop it, restart it, or if it's hung up for some reason, I can just uh, end the process. Um, I, I can see the health. It's been turned as healthy based on some of the metrics that we set um, in alerts. Um, I, I can see the memory usage, the CPU usage. I have the ability to download logs. I can click on this button and I have the ability to select you know, multiple logs and I can download those log files and view them. Um, and as we move along here into alerts, we see I, I have all these different metrics that I can set where a certain threshold has to be met before it'll give you some kind of indication. So we see here, first one's a warning threshold where we set you know, a certain memory usage that we want to receive some kind of warning. And then beyond that, we have a critical threshold. And maybe at that critical threshold, if that gets met, we want to set some kind of alert, which we can go ahead and have an alert sent out to an email address that we have set up here. Um, so you can set all different kinds of alerts. And then if we go back to the main administration page here, 
the health will be associated with those different thresholds that we set. So if we had some kind of concerns, like you see here, it pop up right here. Um, and moving beyond that alerts into threads, um, you can see all the different threads here. Um, I, I have the ability to cancel a thread or disconnect a user right now. I'm the only user in here, so um, I can't disconnect myself. Um, and then moving on towards configuration, this is essentially for TM1 users, um, the configuration file. I can go in and set different uh, parameters for the system. So if I go to TI, I can say, all right, let's enable TI debugging. Or I can say, let's use Excel serial data. And it'll give you a description of all these different parameters that you can enable or disable or adjust you know, different, uh, different, different fields within here. And some of them you may have to you know, restart your database, which you can go ahead and do right here in the details page. You know, update your configuration, restart your database. And then those new configuration settings will take effect. And you know, that's a, that's a you know, walk through databases within uh, pod administration. So moving on to agents, it, it's actually in the same module as databases. If you saw before, um, when we were in databases, there was another tab for agents. So it's all in the same module. It's just a matter of this will take you to the agents tab versus the databases tab. But it's a similar setup where I can see I have two agents. This one has a health concern. Um, you see here it's flagged as a concern. Why? This space, uh, this usage is, has, is at 82.23%. Why is that a concern? We have it set up in here as a warning threshold at 65%. It's not quite at critical yet, but it's reached the warning threshold, so it gave us a little health warning. Um, and then in addition to that, we have the ability to see all the different databases associated with that agent. And I, I would like to highlight as well that this is specific to PA local installation. So agents is something that you only see on PA local. Um, on, on a cloud installation, you'll see secure gateway, which essentially allows you to establish a secure link between plan analytics on cloud and a data source, right? Um, that's the really the main difference between local and cloud in terms of this whole page here. Um, moving on to users and groups. If I click into here, I can see I have, here's all my users. I can see their name, their role, their status. If I click on a user, I have the ability to see the full name, their user ID. I can adjust the role from here. I can see the last time uh, this, this user was modified. I can see what groups they're a part of. And I can manage that from here. I can you know, remove Ton from one of these groups or add it to another group. Um, and I also have the ability to you know, filter my users. I can, you know, if I want to go ahead and see only modelers, if you, have, if you have a lot of users and you only want to see modelers, I can filter by that. I can filter by status. I can filter by you know, multiple things at once. If I want a consumer modeler analysis at once, I can see all those things at once. Um, I also have the capability to download a CSV file of all my users. And that brings me to adding a user within PAW. Um, so within PA local, to add a user, we go ahead and upload from a CSV file where you know, they'll give some instructions. They'll say, hey, you know, here's the fields we need. Here's the inputs we need. You go ahead and create that file with the users you want to add or remove um, and drop that file into here. And then it'll upload your new list of users. Um, on the cloud version, you can send an invite um, directly from this page, or you can do uh, the CSV files import as well. Either will work. Um, moving on to groups, it's very similar to users. It looks you know, very similar and you have a lot of similar functionality. I, I can see all my groups. I can add a group directly here. Um, if I click on a group, I can see you know, who's in it. I can manage, I can add somebody. Maybe I want to add Mark to this group. Click on this name, I hit save. And there we go, Mark's now in this group. I, I have the capability to download a CSV file of all, all my groups. And I also have the ability to upload a file similar to users where I can add multiple groups at once, or I can add multiple users to a group at once, uh, stuff like that. Um, and again, if, you, if there's any, 
information that I need on this particular page, I can go ahead and click this information button and that'll take them to something specific to the page that I'm currently on. So right now I'm on users and groups. And if I open this page up, it might take a second to load, but uh, once it opens up, you'll see the page is specific to users and groups. So it'll take me exactly where I need to go, which I, I personally find very helpful. Um, so moving on to life cycle management, uh, the question is, what is life cycle management for? And what's the business use? Um, and the answer is, you know, maybe you create some kind of PAW asset, whether it's a book or a review um, within PAW, and you have two environments. So you, you create on your, de your development environment, and you want to migrate it to your production PAW environment. That's what lifecycle management is for. Um, so, you know, maybe you want to create a set of books or some type of portal uh, for a planning process where you have a, you know, a set of books and views and visualizations or whatever, and, and you want to test that out in development before you put it in production, you can do that. And then with lifecycle management, you can move it from development into production. Um, and what does that look like? Well, if you've seen the old PAW environment, it, not much has changed. It maybe visually looks a little different, but in terms of functionality, it's pretty much the same where I can go ahead and create a snapshot. Um, and what that snapshot will entail is selecting a bunch of different PAW assets. So you see on the left here, we have filters where I can select the source environment. Right now we only have one environment, but I can select the source environment. I can select you know, a user that may be created um, those different PAW assets. I can select the asset type. I can select the folder that it's in. I can select the database that it's associated with, the date that it was modified, all those things. For right now, I'll just apply as is. And you'll see here a whole bunch of different assets pop up or popping up. What I can do is I can go ahead and maybe these are the two assets that I wanna, that I wanna migrate. So I can select these two, um, hit add to cart, and you see the populate over here. Um, from here, I can re re review my cart like this. Um, and give me a more detailed page to review or remove or whatever I want to do um, with my cart. If I go back, um, I have the ability to save uh, the snapshot for later use. So maybe I want to save it. And then at some point later on, I'm going to want to migrate it. So I can save the snapshot here. I can export it to a file that I can then upload um, on the new environment if I want to do it that way. So I can save the snapshot to export. Um, or I can click this migrate button and it'll go ahead and allow me to save the snapshot and migrate it uh, to a target environment right here, right now. Um, and if I go back to the main page here, um, anything that I have saved snapshot wise will, will be um, populated in here. Right now we don't have any, but if I had created one and populate in here, you can use that at a later point. Um, moving down to customizations, this is where you're gonna do anything associated with color palettes or fonts. So if I click on here, you'll see two tabs, one for palettes and one for fonts. Palettes, I can go ahead and add a new palette and It'll give me this selection here. I, I can select from a grid or I can use a wheel with hex codes and all that good stuff to get the exact color that you want. Um, but if I just select from the grid, I can start selecting some colors and it'll automatically populate some colors just based on your original color. Um, if you have automatic selected, so if I select this, it'll you know, give me some color scheme here. Um, and I can go through and you know, keep adding different colors and it'll keep automatically updating um, colors that it feels would go well with the colors that you currently have selected. Um, or I can completely do a custom and then you know, select each one as I go. Whatever color scheme that you want to you want to add to your system that will be used for your, your PAW books and visualizations um, you can do within here. And then similarly for fonts you can add a custom font file. If you have a custom font that you want to use for your views or if you have some kind of text box or something like that where you have some text that you want to use custom font, you can upload it into here from a text file and then use it um, within your views and things like that. 
um, and moving beyond that, um, features. I am a big fan of this, and Lee touched on this earlier. Um, basically, this gives you the ability to enable or disable new features. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people have experienced, you know, a program or an app or a web tool updating, and you know, maybe it'll tell you that it updated, but you, you, you're kind of thrown into it a little bit. Um, an alternative approach is sometimes it'll tell you that it's updating, but it won't force you into it right away. It'll give you the option to enable it when you're ready. And that's the approach that IBM has taken, where if there's some kind of big update or change, they're not going to force it upon your users right away. You're going to have the ability to enable it when you're ready. And that's exactly what they did for this big PAW update. Um, it was a big change visually and functionality wise. So they didn't force it upon the users. They gave the administrator the ability to enable it when people were ready. So give people the chance to get comfortable with it rather than you know, go on to Paul one day and realize, I don't know how it works because it's, it's, you know, it's a different product um, based on this big update. So this functionality will allow you to control that. Um, and right now you'll see there's nothing here because they do tell you at a certain point um, they will make that feature permanently enabled. They will give you some time if you're on cloud uh, to get comfortable with it, but eventually it will become a permanent feature that you won't have the option to enable or disable, but you, you, you will have time to get comfortable with it. Um, if you have a local installation, then that's just a matter of whenever you decide to update your PAW. Um, and that's PAW administration at high level. And I went through all of the components. Um, so I'm going to pass it back over to Lee uh, for some closing uh, topics that he wanted to go over. All right. Thanks, Dylan. Let me bring the presentation back up again. All right. Well, thanks for, for going through that. So. As we talked about at the, at the very beginning, now that we've seen some of these people, we want to also, or now that we've seen some of these, uh, these these categories, these topics, we also want to think through what are some of the other things that we want to consider when using it. So, one of the things that we want to think about is we want to think about the concept of migration. In the legacy world, the concept of migration was performed as a single task using a simple Windows approach. You just copied your data folder, your Excel files from one system to another, boom, you've done a migration. In the new world, however, there's now two parts to the migration. You still use the same approach as before for the database and the Excel components. But your PAW books and your PAW views are then migrated by creating the snapshots using what Dylan just showed as the, the new lifecycle management tool. So as you saw, the tool offers a lot of flexibility, lets you filter your selections, various topics such as users, asset type, dates, other details about your PAW assets. But overall, the approach is still the same. You're going to copy a set of data, paste it into the new environment. The main difference is in the legacy world, it was one component to migrate. In the PAW world, it's two separate components. But if you think about it, by using the lifecycle management tool, since you're using that tool to create the initial copy, you can also use it to double up as a, as a secondary backup approach for your PAW items. Another thing to think about is the concept of the users and groups. And one of the questions that came through in Q&A uh, specifically asked about this. In the legacy TM1 environment, security was defined for the users of your database. This includes permissions for the data within the environment, the ability to run processes and things like that. And as we just saw with migration, or as we just reviewed with the migration, planning analytics separates the PAW assets as distinct objects. Therefore, it has a separate set, has a separate set of migration approaches, and it also has a separate set of security. PAW security provides the access to the objects, such as your PAW books, your PAW views, and it's also used to provide security to some of the new features we had talked about before as that new experience, such as workflow. So what does that mean for you as an administrator? For now, it means that there's some extra maintenance. It means there's extra maintenance required since there's two sets of security to maintain. Unfortunately, it also means that there's some additional confusion because the terms users and groups, IBM has reused this with different meanings. 
IBM realizes that this is a potential issue. They have it on their roadmap to merge this all together into a single environment. But for right now, the concept of users and groups is actually two sets of maintenance. Another thing to think about, local and cloud. One of the best things about the new PAW interface is that it realizes what type of environment you're running. In the legacy world, all your TMO components were installed, which meant that you would sometimes see items that you may never use. In the PAW world, the model is smart enough to know if you're running a local version or a cloud version. Dylan's example, Dylan's demonstration was on a local environment. And when you're on a local environment, the admin page has a tile called agents. And as you saw, really the, the concept of an agent is it allows you to control your database servers. The agents area, I, mean, I like to think about it, it's the web-based approach that serves as the equivalent of what used to be Windows services, which eventually migrated into Cognos configuration. It lets you perform the tasks such as stopping and starting the database. You can also use the administration agent to look at various information like CPU usage, RAM usage, the, the various things that Dylan had just shown us. <laughs> but if you're in a cloud environment, the admin page will instead have a tile for secure gateway. And really what the secure gateway is, is it's used to create a connection between plain analytics on the cloud and your on-premise databases, any, any sources that you want to link to. And really what you can consider that, the way I like to think about that is secure gateway is the equivalent of ODBC on the cloud. So this gives you an idea of some of the other things to think about because as the maintenance concept, as the administration concept changes, and as the interface changes, the way that you're going to administer, that the various things that you're going to do are going to come into play a little bit. Okay. So we just talked about a lot of different things, all the different components associated with the new experience, all the details in this particular case of administration from a technical aspect, the other pieces, the consideration. Okay. Yeah, this can become really confusing. And this is where Revelwood is here to help. If you are looking to learn a little bit more about any of the detailed topics, administration, anything associated with developer, if you have any end users that would like to learn a little bit more about the planning analytics interface, the web-based component of PAW, the Excel-based component of PAX, Revelwood is here to help. Revelwood offers various training classes, whether we go one-on-one -on -one or whether we do it in a group format to help roll out and migrate over to the planning analytics environment. And as you're migrating into the planning analytics environment, it's a great time to step back and say, how's my system? This is the opportunity. This is the time that I typically recommend to people to say, when you're doing a software upgrade, let's think about looking at your database. Let's take a look at how is your database running, your rules, your feeder, your design, any new business processes that come into play. And Riverwood also offers a service called Performance Tune-Up, where we can offer some assistance there. In addition, on our website, Revelwood has what we call our Knowledge Center. And our Knowledge Center consists of weekly blogs that we post of something new, something to take into consideration associated with planning analytics. Some of our articles are about new functionality. We just did an entire series on the forecasting approach. Some of them are business oriented, things to consider. Some of them are nothing to do with planning analytics, but more towards FP&A. Recently, we found a new few, a few new Excel approaches or a few new um, uh, approaches that we can use of other kinds of tools that you're doing. Please register for our website. Please feel free to uh, connect in and sign up to get our weekly, trip, weekly tips and tricks sent to your inbox every day. Now, as I said earlier, our goal is to introduce all of the new functionality, all of the new components to to you uh, associated with that new experience. Last month, we had a webinar associated with the forecasting and Dylan just showed you the administration. Next month, we're gonna be coming up with the next piece of it, which is going to be the applications and plans. So please save the date, please join us for, for that session. We have a link on our website at revelwood.com, which will give you the ability to sign up for it. We'll also be sending you an email link so that you can register it, but hopefully you found this useful in regards to the administrative section Love to show you a little bit more about the applications and plans. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Hopefully you learned some new pieces today. Hopefully you feel a little more comfortable with the concept of planning analytics and, and doing the administration and maintenance. I'd like to offer uh, an opportunity to please contact me. Give me a call if you'd like to chat a little bit to talk about anything associated with PAW. System administration, end user usage, basic financial planning, FP&A approaches associated with your process. 
please give me a call. We have a we, we offer a complimentary 30 minute we call coffee with Lee to discuss any of the pop pieces and we'll even send you the coffee. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time and have a great day everyone.